Welcome dear sisters and brothers once again to this online broadcast of the Mass for Tuesday of week 7 in Ordinary Time. It is the 25th of February 2020. Our entrance antiphon. O Lord, I trust in your merciful love. My heart will rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord who has been bountiful with me. Our entrance hymn, On Eagle's Wings. You who dwell in the shelter Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to the Father and to one another. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You heal the wounds of our sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. James. Where do these wars and battles between yourselves first start? Isn't it precisely in the desires fighting against inside your own selves? You want something and you haven't got it, 
so you are prepared to kill. You have an ambition that you cannot satisfy, so you fight to get your way by force. Why you don't have what you want is because you don't pray for it. When you do pray and don't get it, it is because you have not prayed properly. You have prayed for something to indulge your own desires. You are as, as unfaithful as adulterous wives. Don't you realize that making the world your friend is making God your enemy? Anyone who chooses the world for his friend turns himself into God's enemy. Surely you don't think scripture is wrong when it says, the spirit which he sent to live in us wants us for himself alone? But he has been even more generous to us, as scripture says, God opposes the proud, but he gives generously to the humble. Give in to God, then. Resist the devil, and he will run away from you. The nearer you go to God, the nearer he will come to you. Clean your hands, you sinners, and clear your minds, you waverers. Look at your wretched condition and weep for it in misery. Be miserable instead of laughing, gloomy instead of happy. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And trust your cares to the Lord, and he will support you. And trust your cares to the Lord, and he will support you. Oh, that I had wings like a dove to fly away and be at rest, so I would escape far away and take refuge in the desert. And trust your cares to the Lord, and he will support you. I would hasten to find a shelter from the raging wind, from the destructive storm, O Lord, and from their plotting tongues. And trust your cares to the Lord, and he will support you. For I can see nothing but violence and strife in the city. Night and day they patrol high on the city walls. And trust your cares to the Lord, and he will support you. And trust your cares to the Lord, and he will support you. He will never allow the just man to stumble. And trust your cares to the Lord, and he will support you. Hallelujah. 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 If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we shall come to him. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and the disciples made their way through Galilee. And he did not know one, anyone to know, because he was instructing his disciples. He was telling them, The Son of Man will be delivered into the hands of men. They will put him to death, and three days after he has been put to death, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he said, and were afraid to ask him. They came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the road? They said nothing, because they had been arguing which of them was the greatest. So he sat down, called the twelve to him and said, If anyone wants to be first, he must make himself last of all and servant of all. He then took a little child, set him in front of them, put his arms around him and said to them, Anyone who welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me 
Well comes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, my dear brothers and sisters, St. James, in the first reading, in the very first sentence, he said, Where do these wars and battles between yourself first start? Isn't it precisely in the desires fighting inside your own self? Sometimes when we see so much division in the world today, division in offices, division in organizations, a division in our homes, division in society, the real division begins in the human heart. If there is peace in every person's heart, there will be peace in this world. And so the real battle that is going on is not so much outside of us. The real battle is within us. It is because we cannot handle this battle within us. And that is why it has its effects on others. And so St. James makes it very clear that the reason why there is so much division, it is simply because of selfish ambition. We all want to get the things that we desire. We crave for things. We crave for power. We crave for glory. We crave for those things in the world. And because we cannot have them, then it is where envy greed, comparison, resentment will grow in our hearts. And when that happens, we will use evil means to procure what we desire. And so this is really a battle that must begin in our hearts. The battle of wanting to do what is right and what is good. And so, when we speak of this battle, it is also important for us to realize that because many of us, and most of us rather, are very insecure people, we want attention, we want recognition, we are afraid to suffer, we are afraid of pain, and most of all, we are afraid of death, rejection. And so there is this desire in us to protect ourselves. And that is the reason why this craving for power, for glory, for recognition, it is not only in the secular world, it is equally real even in the religious world, whether we are priests, bishops, laity, lay leaders people even working in the church, helping in the church, they also seek recognition. They also want power. They want fame. They want to be the best compared to the other group. We are better. And so many of us, even when we are serving, we don't serve with the right motive. Although we claim we want to serve God, we want to serve our brothers and sisters. And this was the case of the apostles in today's gospel. They too desire to be famous, to have power, to be seated on the left and the right hand of Jesus. And so they were arguing among themselves, who was the greatest? We want to be the best. And so this will cause, of course, resentment and competition. But it's important for us to realize this. In today's gospel, Jesus tells us the only competition that is allowed amongst us, the only ambition that we should have, the only ambition that will give you true peace and joy and happiness is the ambition to love God and to love your brothers and sisters, to serve God 
and to serve your brothers and sisters. All other ambition will cause you to be unhappy, restless. You might be a great time businessman. You might be very powerful. But you ask yourself, are they really happy? Those who have plenty of money, plenty of power, are they happy in their hearts? What's the use of acquiring all these things, all this fame and having status in life? But you are not at peace. You are not happy. You are not fulfilled. So true fulfillment, that's the life of wisdom that Jesus is offering us, is precisely to put God first and to put our brothers and sisters before self. And this is what St. James says, you are unfaithful as adulterous wife. Don't you realize that making the world your friend is making God your enemy? Anyone who chooses the world for his friend turns himself into God's enemy. Because, St. James says, the spirit which he sent to live in us wants us for himself alone. If we are all for God, our focus is on God alone, then our objective is clear. Our motive is clear. So whatever you do, even in church, you have to ask yourself, is it really for the greater glory of God? Is it truly out of love for Him? But this love for God, of course, is expressed in service. But not just service. Again, Jesus makes it clear, it is humble service. That is why he took a little child. A child, in those days, they were insignificant. They have no position. They have no power. And yet Jesus chose the child and said, if you welcome one of these, you welcome me. In, in other words, what Jesus meant is really this. You know, if you serve people, and these people cannot pay you back. That is the greatest joy. To know that we have made a difference in the lives of others, to know that we have given hope to people without expecting anything in return. This is a joy that no amount of money or things can really buy. I mean, this is my experience actually as a priest, as a bishop to be able to give my service for free, to be able to love without worrying about being recognized. In fact, sometimes when you are not recognized, you feel happier because you know that God recognizes you. And that is a joy that, again, cannot be compared. Sometimes if people recognize you and appreciate you, or they applause and they say nice things, then uh, perhaps Jesus could have said, you already received your reward. No other reward. But truly, when we do it in that manner, there is great joy. And that's the reason why I always believed, and I always made it clear. I have a vision for the Archdiocese. Why is it that even for me, with all the challenges, with all the difficulties of trying to align the parishes and the diocese organizations together. And sometimes it is so difficult, yet I still can maintain my peace and my joy. It is simply because I don't have an ambition. For me, the vision for the diocese is for the good of all. If the vision is not realized, it is all right. Because it must be God's vision. It cannot be my vision. If it's God's vision, then that vision will be realized. If it's not God's vision, it will fail. And if God wants me to fail, then we should fail. And I should fail. All I'm concerned is, am I doing God's will? If I do God's will, whether it's failure or success, it doesn't matter. Because I'm at peace. And so today, that's why St. James tells us, you know, in order to really give ourselves, we need to purify our motives. Purifying motives is very essential if we really want to serve God and to serve our brothers and sisters. 
That is why St. James says, you know, if you don't get what you want, it's because you don't pray. Doesn't mean you pray very hard. And God will say to you, thy will be done. No, 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 no. When you pray very hard, then you will say to God, thy will be done. It's not the other way. So to pray is actually to discern our motives. To pray is really to be in union with the mind and the heart of God. Because when you are one with God, you will be at peace. And that is why St. James says, you know, give in to God, resist the devil, and he will run away from you. We need to come near to God. And more so, tomorrow we'll be entering the season of Lent. That is a great opportunity to resist the evil one. The nearer we come to God, the further the devil will run away. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness, we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Bless be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness you receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Bless be God Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask you that what we offer to the honour of your majesty may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Your word through whom you have made all things, whom you send as our Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death, and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Hosanna in the 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that they have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread without the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave to you, my peace I give to you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be So I invite all of you who are watching this online broadcast of the Mass to join me in making an act of spiritual communion. Lord Jesus, I wish to thank you for offering yourselves as a sacrifice for our salvation. In the Gospel, you have told us that the Son of Man has come to die for us and to rise again in spite of what was ahead of you you continue your mission with fortitude with courage and with perseverance I pray to you Lord Jesus as I receive you into my heart may the same commitment to the mission that you have entrusted to us be also in my heart and in my mind. Help me, Lord Jesus, as I received you spiritually into my heart. May I too also become your blood shed for others, your body broken for others by my humble and selfless service, not just to you, but to your brothers and sisters. So, Lord Jesus, in spite of my unworthiness, all the many times I allowed the world to take possession of my heart. Today, Lord Jesus, I pray for this grace to cling on to you, never to let you go, so that you will be the guide of my life, so that, Lord Jesus, you will lead me to glorify your Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is pledged to us by these mysteries. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our recessional here, take my hands. Take my hands and make them as your own. And use them for your kingdom here on earth. Consecrate them to your care. Anoint them for your service where you may need your gospel to be sown. Take my hands, they speak now for my heart, and by their actions they will show their love. God, them on their daily course, be their strength and guiding force to ever serve the Trinity above. Take